Comedy legend Louis Black is bringing Goodbye Yeller Brick Road, the final tour, to Steelhouse on Sunday, February 25th. Tickets go on sale Friday, November 17th at 10 a.m. Get yours at SteelhouseOmaha.com. It's time to take your body care routine to the next level. Introducing Osea's bestseller body care set, the perfect companion for your summer travels. This four-piece kit transforms dry skin to silky, soft, and glowing. It features travel sizes of Osea's best-selling Andaria Algae Body Oil and Body Butter, clinically proven to improve skin elasticity, along with their anti-aging body balm and salts-of-the-earth body scrub. And to top it off, it's packed in a vegan leather bag, making it a must-have for all your summer adventures. Everything Osea makes is clean, vegan, cruelty-free, and climate-neutral, so you never have to choose between your values and your best skin. Treat yourself to glowing, healthy skin this summer with clean, vegan skincare and body care from Osea. Right now, you can get the Best Sellers Body Care Set valued at $78 for 33% off. Use code SUMMER to save an additional 10%. That's an additional 10% off at OCEAMalibu.com code SUMMER. Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Wine Coven. Before we get to the show, we have an exciting announcement because we are doing a live show in Los Angeles, Woo! the city of angels, <laughs> on Wednesday. City. The windy city, the sunshine state, <laughs> um, on Wednesday, December fourth at Largo. Yes. OMG, we are so excited to be in this space. Lucy, how do we get tickets? Oh, you can get tickets at wineandcrimepodcast.com forward slash live. Just go to the website. There's all the information you'll ever need. We're so excited. We will see you in L.A. on Wednesday, December 4th. We cannot wait. Now on to the show. You are listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Yeah, sure you betcha. And I am stern when I say that. You do sound like a schoolmarm. Yeah. Um, I'm Kenyon. I'm Lucy. And I'm Amanda. And we have some very special guests for you this episode. Please welcome Darren Carp and John Thrasher of Martinis and Murder. Woo! Woo! Oh, thanks, the crowd everybody. goes wild. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God, Darren, you're so hot. John, you're so hot. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah, really appreciate it. What a warm welcome. Yes, thanks. Yeah, the applause Thank you for arriving big. on the second day of my period, so I will be the crankiest <laughs> today. Oh, good. Sounds great. That makes two of us, Watch sweetie, out. so let's go. I'm ready. You're welcome. <laughs> What's a period? Yeah. It's, well, I'll explain it to you later, sweetie. Thanks. Okay. Later. <laughs> you're, you're, gets, you're, gets traumatic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm plugging oh. in my heating pad. That's right. But seriously, I thanks for having I have to point out us. that Amanda promised 45 seconds ago not to bring up her exploding vagina, <laughs> and here we are. Well, I didn't bring up my exploding vagina. You did. I use very <laughs> tame language when discussing my menses. John doesn't even know what a, a vagina is, so guys, take it very I don't either, slow so John and I have that in common. One step at a time, <laughs> One guys. step at Like, <laughs> ease him into the girl talk, you know what I mean? Got Just it. ease him in. <laughs> I have a really gross anecdote that I'm not going to share. So great. Hey, okay. <laughs> saving you, John. They're saving you. Uh, I feel like we probably have some stuff in common, given the themes of both of our shows <laughs> being alcohol and murder yes. driven. The two most important things. And yeah. comedy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. This has been something that we should have been doing like a long time ago. The group of Absolutely. us. Yes. Right? And I mm-hmm. agree. Partially that's my fault, we frankly, were... because they have reached out and it has just been a scheduling nightmare and we have finally made it happen. But John, yes, it's been I'll amazing. S- I'll, get, I'll get mad at him later yeah, for it. I'll explain you, vaginas to him <laughs> and then I will also... Yeah. <laughs> Thank Slap you. him, obviously. I need life taken lessons. so yeah. long. Yes. But we are so thankful that There's you guys would have list. us on. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having us. 
Oh, oh we're so excited. We I think we met you, John, at CrimeCon last year, and we were like, why haven't we done this? We need to make this happen. Yeah. So, yeah. I remember, did yeah. You, were, you guys were the ones that had the weird, like the statue of David cut out or something. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we Good stopped memory. by your booth and we were yep. like, oh my God, I love this little like statue of David thing they have going on. Like you don't see that. Yeah. I wonder why John liked that. I know. Isn't that weird? That's like, weird. A naked <laughs> man. A gay man to like the statue of David. That why feels is, ironic. Why is that yeah. working? Yeah. I don't me. know. We'll discuss we that later. We did censor David's penis. I was going to so say, I don't remember seeing taste. that. I would have remembered that yeah. for sure. Oh. We put a logo <laughs> sticker over David's penis, <laughs> and right. we also scrawled fucking patriarchy across That's his torso. Right. That's right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Fuck the patriarchy, guys. Yes. It's a common Fuck. theme. I don't even know what that yeah. means, but I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> I'm on your podcast, so I agree. Whatever. All, <laughs> for All it. right. Well, the the theme of this episode is uh, an homage to our guests. So the theme is martini fueled murders. Ooh. Ooh. We need to actually, Ooh. I'm wondering what this is. Maybe we need to be doing it. I know. Let's steal their material, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, we'll just totally release <laughs> this on our own. Yeah, yeah, no big deal. We'll yeah. dub our voices over there. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like it never happened. By the way, you <laughs> are Feel great Feel free voices. to use this topic yes. Yes, yes. for oh, yeah, an upcoming absolutely. episode. Also, I couldn't find a murder, so mine is just crimes. <laughs> oh, I have crimes. a murder. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> Excited. Don't you um, worry. So let's get right into the drinks portion. Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing? Although maybe it's not wine this it's week. It's definitely not wine this week. Obviously, we had to drink a martini this week. And uh, I have a fun obviously. one that I have not made in a while that felt a little witchy, a little spooky, yes. but with a little mm. dash of fun and sweet, just like us. Which uh, <laughs> who's fun and who's sweet to here, chin. You know? I mean, I have type 1 diabetes, so like my blood gets sweet sometimes. I guess oh, that wonderful. counts. <laughs> Thank you for sharing so, that. Yes. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I found this recipe a while back on the Spruce Eats website, and they have some awesome and super easy cocktail recipes that you can try if you want to get fancy um, without having to like go to Minnesota School of Bartending to follow these recipes. It's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> so we are drinking the Sage Lady cocktail, Ooh. and it was created to feature absolute mango vodka. Oh, my God. But like any... Any mango vodka could be used, and I love I'm, flavored vodka. I'm here for I it. I cannot. I yeah. do not Lucy like and I love flavored it. vodka. Oh. Uh, Zach and I, when we lived in China, the only like non baijiu, which is Chinese like rice wine disgustingness, Ugh. the only like non baijiu alcohol we could get was pepper vodka. That sounds what? amazing. Mm. Just drink Bloody Marys always. It's well, for Bloody true. Marys, mm -hmm. but we were trying to drink it as like just vodka in oh other God. cocktails because we were so desperate. So there was a lot of pepper vodka and orange juice no! happening. They had a knockoff Johnny Walker too. Mm. I kind of want a Bloody yeah. Mary right now. I know. I'm like, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't a Bloody I'm Mary be good? Mood. But we're not drinking a Bloody Mary, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. We're drinking Sage Lady. Okay. Sage Lady. Shut up, John. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just kidding. So um, this cocktail is absolute mango vodka with fresh sage and cucumber to balance out the sweetness. Um, so the use of fresh, fresh sage, uh, which is an herb that's actually rarely seen in cocktails. You see a lot of rosemary and a lot of basil, but not a lot of sage, mm -hmm. um, is possibly the most intriguing aspect of this recipe. And then add the refreshing flavor of fresh cucumber, a little bit of orange Cointreau and the peach bitters that balances mm. everything out, leaving you with a fascinating drink to enjoy. So here is mm. how you make it. You combine, uh, well, the ingredients are one and a half ounces of mango vodka, two to three sage leaves that are fresh, not like the dried stuff you mm -hmm. get in the, uh, the, what is it? The seasoning aisle. Yeah. Like go you, to, you want the fresh, like fuzzy leaves. Yeah. You want to go to the produce aisle for this one. Don't start breaking apart that thing that you use to burn in your new apartment. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Bad idea. <laughs> um, three <laughs> slices of cucumber, one ounce of simple syrup, half an ounce of Cointreau, one dash of peach bitters. But I think any bitters would do. 
um, and then you garnish it with a sage leaf. So you want to muddle the simple syrup, cucumber, and fresh sage in your shaker before adding the other ingredients with a scoop of ice. Shake it violently <laughs> <laughs> and pour through the strainer lid of your shaker, ideally into a chilled glass and garnish with a sage leaf. Done and fucking done. Yum fucking and yum. fucking yum. Yeah. yeah. And I already nice. made this because I was not about to shake and pour a cocktail in front of my computer. Right. <laughs> yes. Smart. That's smart. Not fucking happening. Mostly because every cocktail shaker I've ever owned leaks. And the one I used today uh, yeah. was no exception. What why, is why that about? Is that? It's I like the know. one thing you don't, don't need to leak leaks. And it's like every single one of them. I could think of a few things right? I don't want to well, leak. Well, listen, you're right about <laughs> yeah. that. I'm just saying, oh you got to get out there. Day you gotta two get the of shaker. my period. Exactly. You got to get the shaker with like the rubber gaskets yeah, around. Yeah, but those so are like really seals. hard to find. Crate yeah. and barrel, baby. Crate and barrel. Oh, shit. Yeah. Crate and Shout barrel out for the good stuff. podcast. Mm -hmm. We God win. You clearly have a crate and barrel. Yeah, it's, it's, that's clear. I right. really need to register for never having been married. <laughs> <laughs> I need to register for never will be married. Yeah. So there you go. Same. Right? Yes. So anyway, that is the cocktail that I'm enjoying today. And we don't have like a pop or a or a crack. We have so I, a, 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 an ice chink. I don't have ice in mine. Do you have an ice my, in yours? My ice melted. I was trying to make it clink on the glass and it, it melted. Well, then we're just going to raise <laughs> our glasses and do a nice cheers, okay? Nice cheers. Okay. Cool. Cheers, y'all. One. Two, three. Nice, nice cheers. 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 Oh, jeez. Nice <laughs> cheers. Cheers. I, I should have kept my jar of goat bones intact. That oh, would have made a nice yeah. little martini shake noise. Very, oh, very you really yeah. fucked up. I'm learning You're a lot now. from this yeah. already 10 minutes in and lots <laughs> happening. Exploding vaginas, goat, goat bones. Butt. I feel good oh, about this. Yeah. We're like 10 minutes in, baby. Yeah. 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 We have Buckle a long up. journey ahead of us. Buckle <laughs> we do. up. <laughs> All right. Well, Lucy, aka Goat Bones Lachelle. Goat Bones uh, Magoo. <laughs> your prison name. Why don't you, yeah. <laughs> why don't goat, you Goat Bones Magoo? <laughs> goat Bones Magoo is what they call me. I'm prison. getting that tattooed on my body. Get it yeah, as a tramp stamp though and make everyone hella yes. confused. <laughs> It's perfect. Just a skeleton of Mr. Magoo. Yes. So oh, I even love better. this idea. It's in even a goat, better. In yes. a goat form. Oh, and it super works because I'm almost completely blind. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lucy, take it away. I, I think your segment is going to be different than background and psych this week. Yeah, not a lot of background in psych having to do with martinis. <laughs> so I wanted to take the opportunity to interview our lovely guests. Oh. Just a little bit about your own show. A couple of personal probing details. We'll work up to it, though. Sounds nice. I love a good personal probe. <laughs> I, love, I, I was going to say, I like a probe just to start. Um, mm -hmm. ease, ease your way into it. But yeah, we, we, we will answer whatever you guys want. We are very open, open books, open mics here at Martinez Yay. and Murder. Okay. Okay. I'm scared well, of the uh, give us a little bit of a, a background on your podcast. How did that come about? Were you working together previously? Just a little, what, what, what started the whole thing? Your origin story. Well, John, you fell in love with me how long ago? Several years ago. <laughs> Several years ago. You were questioning your sexuality for That's me, right, I think. That's right, I was. In um, fact... I met him on a red carpet, actually, because he works at Oxygen and I work at Bravo and they are sister networks. And so we work mm -hmm. very much so hand in hand. And we did fall in love on that red carpet. I honestly think yeah. so. Like we just like kind of connected and had a good relationship. And John used to he's very into tech, very in the podcast world. Mm. And he was one of the co-hosts, I believe, on the number one Glee podcast called Glee Chat. Wildly popular. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Glee. So that's that his forte is Glee. He'll talk to you about Glee. <laughs> and he also was um a guest on Muggle cast that his friends do, which is like the number one Harry Potter. So he that's knows right. 
literally everything. And so it's really John's <laughs> genius that brought no. us together because he wanted to sort of like, you know, we were younger at the time. This was maybe like five, five years, years ago. ago. Yeah. And so he was like, do you want to just like start a podcast about our lives and blah, 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 blah. And like, we both have cool, interesting jobs. And so we did that and it was called Currently. And we just did it on our own time, just kind of messing around. And then we did that for what, two years, John? Yeah, Boy? like two years. And then you take it away because actually you're the reason I'm on Martinis and Murder. Well, yeah, I mean, Darren put it. Thank you, Darren, by the way. You're so welcome, sweet sir. of you to say so nice yes. things about me. But yeah, I think, you know, I had always loved podcasting. And as Darren mentioned, we were doing currently for a couple of years, which, which was just an all topics kind of podcast yeah, about, about our life lives and, and just, everything. It was frankly just really meant for us to practice. practice and stay focused on being on air together. We both, I think, had a hunch that we wanted to do something together because our yeah. chemistry clicked so well and so early when we met. So, um, yeah. So basically in a couple years ago, oxygen rebranded from a, uh, a reality television network into a full-time true crime network. We've had snapped mm -hmm. on the air for several seasons, 25, mm -hmm. I think at this point, but, um, yeah, then we went full-time true crime and, you know, we wanted to do, uh, we had me here on the digital team. It just felt natural to be doing a true crime podcast. And, and I, Serial had like, you know, just gotten right. really popular. So I think they wanted right. to capitalize yep. on it too. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. They wanted to, they wanted to have a, have something out there for uh, the fans that love true crime podcasts as well as true crime television. So I obviously was a great kind of person for that. And I knew what kind of show I wanted to do, which was something um, where true crime was more digestible. And I think you guys know that very well. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, this genre, there's only a couple of us out there really doing it right now. And apologies to your listeners. We are in a room where the steam heat is turning on for the season and it's kind of <laughs> making loud <laughs> crashes. We're not They're being... in the hull of the Titanic. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what And what you're what hearing like. is the crew shoveling coal into the... Sh <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I'm yeah. either beating the shit out of him or it's the heater. <laughs> Yeah. It's their pet buggy. There's one sweaty yes. hand against the window. Exactly. Just looking down. One of us is new to getting, uh, you know, sketched at the moment. You we'll let you figure it out. I knew it. Yes, yeah. exactly. I knew it. But anyway, to get back to what I was saying, and basically, you know, I knew that having done the show with Darren for two years, like, it was just obvious that the two of us would be doing this. And, you know, right. we didn't set out to do a comedy podcast, by the way. That was no. never our original intention. We just wanted to tell stories in our own kind of personality and we have a lot of opinions yeah and it evolved into what it is today and yeah that's kind of where it all began it sounds similar i think to what you guys do in the sense that you guys are a group of friends that really like love to hang out and have fun but you also want to talk mm -hmm. about the crime stuff so that's why we we yeah. connect so and well. i will say originally we didn't even john and i didn't have any alcohol involved at all like we actually didn't even yeah. know if our company was going to be okay with it and then our producer matt who's also our bartender i think was the one who was like no let's definitely drink at work. Oh, that's <laughs> the it's first necessary. thing we did. So we it was like, his really genius helps. idea. Yes, yeah. it definitely helps. And it's fun to have a little cocktail recipe and get a little lubricated. I tend <laughs> to get a little bit more lubricated than John. That's hard yes. same. Um, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely a very fun podcast. No, yeah. I love doing it. It's my favorite part of the week. My God. Awesome. Amazing. Nice. So for, First of all, I just have to say I knew a little bit about your backgrounds and I am wildly jealous, A, of your Glee background, John, <laughs> and B, Darren, of your proximity to Andy Cohen. So oh. we'll get back to Andy Cohen. <laughs> okay. Ask me what <laughs> I'm Kyle <laughs> Richards. But on the note of, you know, the true crime comedy show, we know that it can be tough to produce something like that. So how do you kind of toe the line between your humor and being respectful to victims and their families, especially now that your show is like, you know, it's a comedy show. It's not just like sometimes you're funny. We get this question all the time, so we just want to know what your answer is. So <laughs> yeah, we just, yeah, we just want to steal your answer, basically. Yeah. yeah. That's so do this right. <laughs> I, I think that, yeah, I, I expected that you guys got this the same way we do. Um, you know, the funny parts of our show are not necessarily the murder, you know, like our show is not just, we, we sit never down. victim blame. Yeah. We never or shame right. or anything like that. Of obviously. course not. Who in their right mind would ever do that? And I think some people see this, this genre. Oh, now we have sirens in the background, by yeah. the way, this yeah. is yeah. truly, Exciting. this is truly it's a on, great, see, it's on brand. So. Yeah. It's on it brand. Is. Exactly. New York city right here, <laughs> midtown. <clears throat> but, um, you know, the funny parts of our show, or I like to say the parts that people come back for 
are just us kind of enjoying being with each other. And, you know, the show is true crime, yes, but it's also our lives. It's what's happening here in the studio with each other. And um, naturally, I think luck, we're just, I guess, lucky enough that people find that us and our personalities entertaining enough. So we use Matt a lot as our foil and it yeah. helps to be sort of funny. And I think the biggest jokes we ever make are usually on us and about us, you know, like yeah, exactly. we tease each other constantly, you know, Very we're like brother and sister and Matt is our child. Uh, <laughs> and we just have, we have a lot of fun doing it, but our intent was never to be funny. It's just that yeah. it was a way to sort of relate to these really horrible cases. And, and like John said, digestible. And so eventually, you know, that's kind of how Matt, the bartender kind of formed is I think John and I really needed an outlet for uh, our humor and to make it funny. And obviously we're never going to be like, Oh my God, they were raped. How funny is that? Right. But like, of we will not. take the details of a case and we might be able to make a joke about it, but never about the victim ever. I yeah. mean, that's like a no go territory for us for sure. Of course, yeah. And it, and that just comes kind of naturally. And it just ended up being just, I guess a comedy podcast well, even, with the with the true crime spin. If or, you want to call it comedy, because it's not like we're coming onto the microphone and like trying out material. Yeah, we you don't know? do bits or anything. It's anything. all right. it's all we we have our facts in front of us, yeah. and like we have we know exactly what we need to say because we have a lawyer on the line, and we obviously you know these are real cases and yes. facts matter in in these more oh, than you ever. Have a lawyer, we do you have, have a lawyer. One step ahead of us until <laughs> That's very not true. recently. We have a lawyer. Well, <laughs> now. <laughs> Well, we found that we had to say allegedly a lot, you know, because if you can't say we can have our opinions, but you can't just say like, oh, I think this person did it. And, you know, because people could sue us and we are part of a network. And so it's not just like the two of us on the side. So we definitely needed a lawyer to be on the line. Um, And it's just it's we have our what we need to say, but then everything else is completely improv. And so some episodes are funnier than others. Some are more serious, but we try and be ourselves throughout. Love that. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, very similar to how we answer that question. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So it's nice to commiserate on that a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, Speaking of commiserations, Darren, what are some of Andy Cohen's bizarre, like, Mariah Carey-esque green room requests? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Spill it. I, I I hate to admit that he's not the biggest diva, I gotta say, and I think that's a testament to being yeah. with him for nine years. He's pretty low maintenance. Um, mm. We should mention that you're his assistant, in case anyone listening Yes, I am his know. assistant, his one and mm-hmm. only assistant. I like to say I'm fame adjacent. Uh, yeah, I know that you, uh-huh. you yes. I, was, I was Andy Cohen proximity or whatever you said, but I'm, I'm fame adjacent. I think it's even in my Instagram profile. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, things that are on his, he likes green apples, uh, grilled chicken and veggies. Uh, he would diet coke for a little while. He loves the tea. He does not drink coffee, so he's English no. breakfast with a splash of milk. You know, yeah. nothing crazy. Yum. Nothing. This nothing. is really similar to our rider. I feel very fame adjacent <laughs> right now. The diet yes. coke. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I really the connect veggies. with the diet. so much hummus. Mm -hmm. I connect with hummus and a Diet Coke for sure. (laughs) We basically lived off of hummus all summer during our our tour. tour. So sick of carrots. It got a little rough. (laughs) Yeah, I imagine. I imagine. We didn't remember you could have multiple riders that you send to different venues so that they could switch up your food. Yeah, right. Exactly. (laughs) Things you learn. He doesn't. We need to make an. He doesn't have. We need to make an egg McMuffin rider. Honestly, (laughs) we got to do a Taco Bell rider next time, John. Absolutely, are you kidding? That's what we gotta do. Next level. Yeah, I think people think I'm like waving my palm fronds at him, like to give him a natural breeze and feeding him grapes. No, No. he's pretty. He's pretty chill. He's pretty chill. Right. Mm Awesome. Amazing. My favorite Andy Cohen Bravo TV moment is when Teresa Judice like threw him across the room. And he's like, Ooh. you're strong. <laughs> yeah. I was like, he is yep. such a good sport about uh, everything. He's got a great sense of humor. Honestly, he taught me, he's teaching me so much and just like how to be, how to take everything with grace and gravitas. And he's just, you know, I have this theory that I think when you become famous, you stop growing as a person, like you stop maturing. And, you know, he didn't get famous until he was well into his forties. And so right. I think he mm-hmm. was already ready, you know, who he was. And he's a good mm-hmm. Midwestern uh, NJB, as I like to say, nice Jewish boy. And so, uh, <laughs> it, uh, you know, it, it, that just comes through even now that he's famous. He can't help but be himself and it's very infectious. 
Amazing. That's nice. That's refreshing. There's yeah. no higher. Co- my my husband is from Brooklyn, so he like didn't understand this. And we were at a Twins game, and it, they were like honoring uh, some really famous twin that um, retired. I don't fucking know sports, whatever. And everyone kept saying like how down to earth he was, and salt of the earth, and like every single person that was honoring him at this ceremony kept saying that and my husband was like what the hell do they have nothing <laughs> else to say about him and I was like no that is the that's highest it. that's yeah that's the <laughs> highest right. honor that yeah. is the medal of honor <laughs> that's down royalty yes you did it. yeah yeah Love incredible it. um okay so is Matt like Batman or like some <laughs> other vigilante superhero we wish. That's like yeah. Is he Madonna? Man. Oh, is, is he I like that theory. Is oh. he Andy Cohen? Sorry. Oh, no. that, that would Cohen. be interesting. I've never seen Matt and Andy Cohen in the same room at the same time. <laughs> well, I will say this. True. Matt, uh, Matt's identity, which for those who don't know, we have the bartender on the show who conceals his identity both in live appearances and on the show with a voice modulation effect. Um yeah, I think he just wants to sort of keep it a little bit anonymous. And um, I love. I mean, that. it sort it's of identity. started as a joke, like because John and I—I I don't know if you remember this, John, because this happened like mm-hmm. almost three years ago. But it was like we were in our other recording studio when we first started, and I think we made the joke. We needed a foil, obviously, for our humor. So I, ju- I particularly just started picking on Matt, and I think we were like, "You're so worthless. You don't even deserve to have a voice <laughs> and a face." <laughs> Is and, he like a producer? <laughs> yeah, he's our producer. Like yeah, he's, he's an integral boss, part, and he's and he's John's <laughs> boss, which I feel like gives me the right to therefore make fun of him because he's not cutting wow. my fucking paycheck. That's so true. I feel it's free reign, and uh, it, we just kind of ran with it, and it was just kind of funny. And then when we used the voice modulator, it was very jarring, I think, for a lot of people, and a yeah. little scary. And then and then people sort of got used to it and, and liked it. And yeah, it, it, the the effect on his voice, I think, is meant to resemble those like 90s you know news shows where like the the witness is sitting in a shadow a silhouette in a silhouette oh, yes. you know <laughs> totally that's, yes. that's kind of what my we favorite were. is when my favorite is when he pops in with that voice modulator <laughs> yeah. thing and it, it's like a true like interjection but it sounds so fucked up he's like oh my god <laughs> hey Darren I have something to say to you I'm like oh god yeah, it's Shut got up. some Scooby Doo vibes a little it does bit. that's he a good Scooby-Doo. way to do. it's Scooby Doo yeah. Matt is Scooby-Doo. some Buffalo Buffalo Jill vibes <laughs> ooh Buffalo Jill yes but if you do it. if anyone comes to like Crime Con or our live shows occasionally Matt will reveal his identity in those special moments we so. did have someone oh, not this year but last year try and rip his reindeer head off because he wears a yeah. reindeer head that's no. uber creepy in the office and I had to like yeah. step in as you a did. bodyguard and we've it was since, very yeah. weird for me. We've since become good friends mm-hmm. with that listener so yes, it's hilarious have. actually. Yes, have. Oh it's my really gosh. Funny. I mean really? that's good but like that's get out of my personal of space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. She makes a joke out of it not rip now. things off my head. Yeah she no. apologized. <laughs> she so. did. She did. <laughs> That's good. Was alcohol a factor? Because we've had some <laughs> real drunk folks at our shows before. Yeah, we it. have. Maybe. Maybe now that you say that, I don't I don't really recall, but we pro- encourage. Yeah, we it's okay as long as you drink responsibly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same. Same. We yeah. always say Just we're funnier drive. if you're drunk. So Absolutely. Yes, I love definitely. that. Definitely. Um speaking of being drunk, what are your favorite cocktails that you've had on the show? Um, or like memorable departures from martinis, maybe? Mm. It's funny because we don't actually drink. We do uh, drink a lot of like theme drinks. Um, yeah. John is a sweet variety guy. Uh-huh. He, he loves anything with a Bailey's. Or some fruity. He loves whatever. a fruity Yum. thing. I'm more of the put your hair nice. on your chest type of yeah. drinker. Uh, so, you know, but I will say one of the better cocktails we've had was actually really in the beginning. Yeah. I think we were covering a Florida murder because it was a key lime martini. Right. So I think it was something Yum. like that. It, and he put oh. this like graham cracker crust, you know, kind of where the Yum. salt would go on a, on a margarita. And John, yeah. and I, but it was like tart, you know, mm. it wasn't overly sweet. And John and I tasted this thing and we were both like, heaven. holy shit, this is good. And Incredible. we always talk about it being our favorite one. Yeah, absolutely. Anything nice. like that, I am so down for. We actually recently just did, because um, I had asked on the show, we have 
Matt, the bartender, and then we have Gina, the staff boozer, who is just uh, in the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. She just, makes the drinks. Yeah, really, she's yeah. like in the uh, food and beverage world, so she has a lot of connections with like helping us kind of come up with some good recipes, and I politely asked if in October we could have some Halloween or fall-themed drinks. Duh. We love some pumpkin nice. spice latte. That's right, because I can only oh, drink yeah, so, PSL, many of, baby. so many... baby. Controversial, but yeah. fine. Mm. Yes. Listen, <laughs> I agree. let me live my life, guys. I agree. I make okay? fun of him for it every day. <laughs> let me live. But I had asked her and she had made like um like a spiked apple cider. Yeah, it, it was, was good. Yeah, good. had I like a it. cinnamon um, stick in it, and yeah. it, I almost went with something like that today, but then wanted to come out of left field. Shake Sounds things great. up. Shake, shake things, up. things up. That's it. Violently That's it. shake things up. That's the episode. Exactly. That's the episode. She got it in. I will say there are some drinks though that I can tell for John they're just too strong because like much. by the end of the episode he's had like negative <laughs> sips. Like for some reason the cup is now overflowing. Four. Yeah, he's, like, yeah. he's, he's like, vomiting weird. back into the glass. It's exactly right. It's just like, yeah. listen, I grew up, my, my dad, my grandparents were kind of not heavy drinkers, but they drank. And it's like, even these drinks are so much stronger than that. It's like, almost like I'm drinking kerosene. It's like, guys, come on. We can just <laughs> cool this down a little bit. We're not trying to grow yeah, chest hair. Yeah, this can be pleasurable. It's it martinis right. and He's a, murder. He's it's a delicate right. flower, and I have to let him blossom in his own time. Thank you, dude. You're welcome, honey. It's his we journey, you know? He used to journey. get... Thank you, yes. His journey. Becoming a man. <laughs> we used to get way, way, way drunker in the early yeah. days of this show. And then we were like, we're going to die. We need to <laughs> not. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. P in particular, cruise ship disappearances, I had to <laughs> listen to the episode again to, like, remember what the fuck Amanda's case was. Oh, my God. I was <laughs> so hammered. Zach came home once, and I had been recording, and we record. We used to record really late night my time because of the time difference. So we would start right. at like midnight my time Oof, and that's hard. it was a weekend. Yes. And my husband came home at like 2 a.m. and we had just finished recording and I was like crawling on the floor <laughs> <and> yeah. laughing, <laughs> like just like <laughs> laughing to myself, giggling. And he was like, was it a good episode? <laughs> 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 the there, I don't know. You tell me, I we, guess. We've deliberately set our recording time for like four o'clock in the evening because. Oh, we, yeah. So that we can, you know, function after we're done, because had we recorded earlier, you know, some of us have to get back to work. So it's not right. exactly the right, right. time. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, that that's tough. I forget that we're in our place of work I sometimes know, right? when we are in our little <laughs> siloed studio, and I'm like, oh shit, exactly. you, there's the president. I'm like, I gotta pull it together. Yeah, <laughs> that would be tough. I do not there's envy Mr. that. Mr. Oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's our president, Mr. Oxygen. Mr. Madam. Oxygen. Oxygen. Mad Madam Oxygen. <laughs> it is that's a, Madam a cool Oxygen. name. That actually. is a cool Madam name. Madam Oxygen. Well, you're to welcome. To yeah, we're gonna steal that. <laughs> mention that to her next time, Darren. Um, speaking of Madam Oxygen, what are your favorite <laughs> Oxygen shows like besides your own? Could be a podcast, could be like TV. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, God. Um, I like Buried in the Backyard a lot. I think that's really good. Um, in, uh, is it Injustice, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. With Nancy Grace, I think is really interesting. And Ooh. you can have your sort of opinions about Nancy Grace, and I understand that we all kind of do. But her show, you know, she she clearly is, you know, passionate about what she does, and she kind of handpicked the cases herself. And I thought that was really cool. I'm always a fan of Snapped. Uh, anytime a yeah. woman snaps, I fucking relate. So <laughs> yeah. I, I sort of have personal <laughs> yeah. experience with that. Uh, yeah, and I've loved. Have you snapped? TV. Darren has snapped. <laughs> I snap every time every on the podcast. John has seen me like in in things before, where he's like, <laughs> "I've never seen you like this." Oh my god! Darren just gets shit done. That's the reality. That's of it. yeah. That is the reality yeah. of it. I also really like a lot of the specials that we've done. Uh, Susan Cox Powell, the disappearance of Susan Cox Powell. Uh, Dirty John was obviously great. We did one on cults. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, John, though. This yeah, is your Deadly forte. Calls. I'm just mentioning literally no, everything I'm great. obsessed with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, of course, Snapped is the OG. So I got to go g give a shout out to Snapped. Um, there's a show coming up in Oxygen called K Killer Siblings, which is really yes. good. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. My sister and I will be watching that. Yes. That premieres October 26th. <laughs> 
27th. I'm not sure when this episode of your guys' show airs, but October 27th it's out, so you can watch it on the site. You're going to be taking notes, aren't you? Oh, yeah. You I've already sister. seen the first episode. It's pretty incredible. Oh, yeah. shit. Amazing. And then we also have a digital series on Oxygen.com that I've been working Oh, yeah, working, this one's great. Yeah, I've been working actually pretty directly on. It's called Searching For, and it's a case of, mm. it's a show, it's a digital series, and it's three episodes right now, and it's it follows a couple of cases, uh, Jana, Jenna Van Geldren, um, Akia Eggleston, and Nancy Moyer's disappearances, and that's been really fun to work on because it's something new for Oxygen, and it kind of, you know, we hope that by sourcing as l- a lot of people to getting getting people talking about this series yes. helps lead to some answers. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, these mm-hmm. disappearance shows are, you know, listen, murder shows are fun and interesting to watch in some, in some regard, but the, the, the disappearances of the unsolved. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff those, is... those are a whole different almost genre because you see the, there's no closure. Yeah. There's no closure. You see the pain more than, than anything. And, and right. you hope that these things get resolved and that there's a, a resolution. So um, those are my shows that I always uh, look out for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for sharing. I yeah. ha- I I gotta go with Snapped personally. It's, oh yeah, yeah. I, it's been on forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's you on, said, it's what, Darren, like thirty nine hardcore identify. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I think I think especially with true crime, and we talk about this all the time of why it's female centric and why people sort of love it, and and sort of women, you know, either gaining the knowledge or sort of feeling secure in the fact that you know we get attacked. Um, but I think with Snapped, it kind of like takes it and reverts it a little bit and says like, listen, like it's not just a male dominated thing. You know, yeah. women have yeah. these cases too. And it's important to recognize that, you know, obviously there's more male serial Gender killers. Gender equality. That's right. We can just <laughs> murder. We Equal can serial opportunity kill. murder. Exactly. We can serial <laughs> kill just like men. Okay. We are rosy riveters or murder. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And explain to the people why he fucking deserved it. A thousand percent. <laughs> I do not that far guys, yeah. but yes, I, I always, saying. Side with the women on Snap. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. I just do. I'm <laughs> oh, like, it's, I it's get it. It's a problem. That's like our biggest note of of like <laughs> criticism is like, love your show. You tend to side with the female <laughs> perpetrators a lot. A lot. What's yeah. going on with that? I well, have like sympathy yeah. for, I have like empathy, excuse me, for Ed Kemper. And we talk about it a lot on the show because I just feel like he turned his life around and, you know, his circumstances were a little different. And John's like, I can't believe you're saying you have empathy yeah. for Ed Kemper. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, this is upsetting to me. And I was like, well, you know, yeah. try to explain it. But Didn't I relate. Did he, like, fuck his mother's head or something? A little bit. A little yeah, bit did. A little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just and a little then bit. I think There's a reason her. for everything. Yeah. But then, you listen... <laughs> He helped solve a bunch of serial killer cases and understand how the mind works. Yeah. He recorded a bunch of audio books. Yeah. And, what like, a great and guy. confessed the, to all of his murders. Blind. I'm not saying he's, he should get the fucking Nobel. I don't want to date him. <laughs> I'm just saying as murderers go, as murderers go, yeah. at least he provided sure. closure for tons of people and could at least explain it. What you're saying is he gets the Eagle Badge is he what gets, you're saying. No, he gets the oh blue, my God. The blue. presidential, the oh, presidential fitness yes. badge. <laughs> that's what Ed Kemper's getting, Such even though he's like 500 Kemper. pounds and 6'9", but <laughs> yep. that's okay. He put mustaches me. back on the map. Yes, <laughs> yes he, did. Yes. he did. He did. Yeah. yeah. He mm-hmm. too has his own journey. My boyfriend won't watch Mindhunter with me anymore because for so some good. weird reason, I'm like sexually triggered doing all, during all of the horrific serial killer interviews like oh, in prison. Okay. And so like, like Son of Sam, son of Sam comes thigh. on and I just start unbuttoning his pants. Oh. oh, I can't wow. help it. I don't know what okay. it is. And he doesn't want to watch these with you. I, <laughs> I think maybe he doesn't want to be like Pavlov trained yeah. into yeah. blood <laughs> rushing to his penis at the mere He's mention of like a horrific crime. His own right. psyche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having, hey, having that, reminds me, that reminds me of a good joke I heard the other day. Do you want to hear it? Of course. Always. Awkward. Obviously. <laughs> Why was Pavlov's hair so soft? I don't know. Why? Because he conditioned it. 
Oh, oh my god. god. That's a good one. I'm gonna be stealing that yeah, one. Obviously, we that's the it. That's As the a show. science major, yeah. that's hitting all my buttons. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks today, for joining everyone. us, guys. Thanks for having <laughs> us. <Right. laughs> what a show it's been. All right. I actually do have two more quick questions for you if sure. you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Of course. Um so speaking of Amanda's sexual advance advances, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What is one <laughs> element that you, you wish you could be. add to your show, but maybe it's like illegal or inappropriate or against Matt's principles, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Um, <clears throat> that is such a good question. Or like think against about it. company policy. Um, yeah. For me, I would, instead of drinking, I would like oh. to smoke pot. Honestly, well, that's, I yeah. think that would yeah. be oh. fucking fun um, <laughs> and a, a different type of show. Uh, just to see mm-hmm. John High would like get, like give me the what? giggles in every single way. I don't know. Oh I've never God. seen this happen. Um, it's against company well, policy. John it's illegal in New York. completely adorable. But I, I think it would it. be cute. Well, that's a great answer, Darren. Mine's a little more boring because one of the things I think working here is that we can't use copyrighted material in any sense yeah. of the sh- of the word. So John like, wants Spice Girls music. I in want every Spice episode. Girls music oh, on every episode, yeah. and for some reason that can't happen. And why do I work here then? That, like literally, Super that fair. is what he Can, genuinely wants. What has this all been about? I know yeah. exactly. <laughs> Thank you. He finds a way to weave in Spice Girls. Let me tell you, every fucking episode, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't mm-hmm. get it. They are a religion. Yeah, to right. Me, and <laughs> I want to worship them. That's this is my just thing. what he wants. What Thank he you. really, really wants. Yes. yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> exactly. That's what I really, you gotta really want. Got to get with. His friends. My, my friends. He's and they are which are clearly friends. the wine and crime folks. Uh, and there you yeah, go. Joy. Obviously. <laughs> Can you sing Spice Girls? Oh my That's well, not copyrighted. If we you're can on our it. show, but I'm assuming we can on your show. If we I mean, we can always show. just mark it as parody since it's not going to go well. No, so. I, sh- I shouldn't you sing right now. But you want. I typically would. What? That's the thing. I would. I want to be able to just to cite lyrics from time to time. I think it was an early episode, maybe within the first five mm. episodes we did, and you and I did like yeah. a 20 second duet of I want to say like Pat Benatar. <laughs> That's right. Or Celine mm. Dion and yep. we had finished oh. it we were like cracking up that we both like knew the lyrics and it was like spontaneously we went moment. into it and then the lawyer was like yeah we gotta cut it gotta take cut that, that out we yep. were like no no <laughs> We oh, learned the man. hard way. It's a life of being a broadcaster what can you say? A Broadway exactly. broadcaster <laughs> Well we're indie so we can do whatever we want <laughs> Yeah, I love it yeah go lucky, for it Lucky dude lucky Speaking of Spice Girls, I have XM radio in my car and I was listening to the 90s on 9 the other day mm-hmm, and they obviously. had like some Spice Girls deep tracks. Oh, yeah. Which one do and you And I remember? was on a long drive. Um, Two Becomes One. Love I it. love yeah. that song. Two Become One. Oh, and then yeah. I can't think of the name of this one, but the one when... Uh, sport. I think it's Sporty Spice. Just yep. hits that high note. It's like not a boy too much. who thinks yeah. he, he can. can. Yeah, that's yeah. too much. <laughs> Um, um, it's so fucking good. Both of which were um, number one singles during Christmas, which was a big thing in uh, England yeah. in those days. So, oh. Ooh, for them. so maybe they weren't so deep tracked. But those it were actually, wannabe, yeah, those weren't you know? super deep. But yeah, they were like the third singles on each of the album. So just throwing it oh, out there. I know everything about They were about so them. good. Yeah. Two Becomes well, One. It's just amazing. like these two podcasts are becoming one right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Love that. Amen. They're it's like, tonight. please God, no. It's the night. <laughs> oh, oh, there he there is. There he is. There he is. Yes. When five become one. Yes. <laughs> I just want to check in really quick. We actually will be talking about crime at some point in the show, right? Or do you guys not? Well, <laughs> I, I do have one more question. Yes. Ask as many as you want. We're having fun. All right. So here's the probing question to wrap us up for, our, for my segment. <laughs> what? What is your favorite mode of getting rid of a dead body? Oh, yeah. Uh I feel like we've talked about this before. It doesn't even need to be the most effective, just like your personal favorites. (laughs) I mean, I will say I feel like it's going to be a disintegration type of method for me. So it's going to be a lot of chemicals Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like that gets rid of the most DNA and the most evidence and the hardest to solve. Yeah. 
And, you know, when I chop up the body parts after I kill people, um, it's easier if they've like partially disintegrated Mm. to put them into individual trash bags and throw them in the river. Well, that's a great way. Thanks, Darren. So right. Yeah, I I, have only thought about this, you know, it's just off the top of my head, for example. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) wonderful. You know, (laughs) right. For me, you know, favorite is an interesting word. I think the the ones that I find the most (laughs) interesting maybe... um, you know, Buried in the Backyard, which is an episode, uh, or sorry, a series on Oxygen Darren reference a minute ago, I always find it interesting to see how killers try to dispose of, of their bodies. So it's not always a burial. It's sometimes the body's at the bottom of a well, or it's been right. in a um, mm-hmm. an oil tank under the porch for 25 years and no one looked uh-huh. at it. Um, so there's uh-huh. a lot of like interesting things where like you kind of look back at your childhood and you're like... That weird barrel that was near that playground. What was that what doing What was there? that doing there that whole time? <laughs> so that kind of stuff, that show is interesting because it makes you think about, frankly, exactly what you said, like how people get rid of bodies. And I will say, and I'm sure you guys, I would love to hear your thoughts about this too, is like this show and just working at Oxygen for me has changed the way I kind of look at my world because it's like, oh, there's a there's a ditch. I remember that episode where, you know, and so yeah. I don't know if mm-hmm. you guys kind of walk through the world in a different perspective. I mean, even today, I don't know if you guys saw, there was that, um, and I, I don't want to date the show here, but some recent news for those of you listening, um, where the truck, what was it? The truck driver in yep. England, there was 39 yes. bodies found inside yes. this truck. And I'm like- Yes, I just saw that. I will never- see a tractor trailer on the highway again the without same ex- way again. assuming it's full of dead bodies. Let's well, just yeah. have you ever seen The Wire? Pigs. No, I haven't. Yeah. yeah. Okay, exactly. well, no spoilers, but season two, is like on Similar. a dock and they open yep. one of those like, you know, uh, storage containers. containers. Yes, containers. And there's like, containers. you know, 15 dead girls in it or whatever. Oh, and yeah. Whenever I see, we actually did a live podcast out yeah. of a container in a container bar at South My by God, Southwest. That's right. I forgot And about I didn't that. mention it there, but I definitely thought of it. And I was like, holy shit, how many of these have held bodies? Probably yeah. good you mm-hmm. didn't mention that while everyone was having drinks and I, having fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say the <laughs> juxtaposition of that is like a big fear of mine outside of going blind is being buried alive. Oh, for sure. So that yeah. would not be oh, great. Oh, yeah. You know, like in Kill Bill where Uma Thurman gets uh, herself out of it is like my favorite scene ever, but also terrifying. Yeah, to totally. Me. High stress. That's a high anxiety yes. scene for me. Yes. For sure. we, had, we had a buried alive episode. And in my case, the lady, it was her fiance that buried her alive oh, what a winner God. and she got herself out by like scraping through the cardboard box that she was in with her motherfucking engagement ring oh, oh my God. God. love it dude diamonds are forever <laughs> That just goes to show that they are a girl's best friend. You know that shit was not cubic zirconia because that shit would have like wiped out <laughs> right, on right, the first right. cardboard scratch. So if he's going to bury her alive, the at least give the girl a diamond. He did. Yes. Yeah. 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 Get her Wait, a big I need to go, ass rock. Did you guys do an episode? I want to go back and listen I to know, that. That's like so good. Yep. Okay. Buried alive. alive. All right. I'm and gonna I do go remember that that episode we paired with Restless Earth Cabernet. That yeah, was a really okay. good pairing. Restless, oh, well, so Restless good. Earth. That you guys are sense. smart. I like this. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, that is my segment. Thank you so much for letting us, you, you know, pick your brains out. We love you. Mm-hmm. Thank to you. To be honest, so much. we had so much fun that we want to. Can we come back on and do like a whole like case with you guys sometime? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And you guys are going to come on our show, right? You. You said you Hell would. yes. You we promise. would love to. Anytime. Well, if you're in New York, yeah. please stop by and have a martini in person and or invite us to yeah. your live show. We would yeah, love to we come. Sh- we should, we should yeah. be in New York in the spring, so we'll keep you updated. Fantastic. Good time to be in New York. Thank you again so much for joining us today. This was awesome. Thank Thanks, you, guys. guys. We have a great you. rest. And don't get too crazy with the rest of your episode, okay? <laughs> Get uh, no promises. <laughs> yeah, we cannot promise that. I don't know why you would even vaginas. try. <laughs> Just so oh, it ends on me. You too. Yeah. You thank you. you too. It is my time of the month, so thank you. I appreciate you that. Too. Good lord, I feel that. We're all cycling. Yes. Okay, you have a nice day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. So, to me, the best part about working from home is being able to wear my actual yoga pants all day, every day. (laughs) Yeah, or no pants at all. Or no pants at all. You don't have to Mm -hmm. unbutton that top button when you're sitting in a meeting for six hours. Oh, my Lord. 
flashbacks. I'm people, triggered. Yeah. People definitely saw me do it. It was not the classiest thing, but I did it anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was before I heard of Beta Brand. Oh. Beta Brand is incredible. They are stylish, comfortable work attire, work pants, the dress pant, yoga pant. You don't have to pick between being stylish and being comfortable anymore. For real. Beta Brand's dress pant yoga pants are super comfy, perfectly stretchy, and they stay wrinkle-free. So, like, you don't have to bust out the ironing board at 6 in the morning. Traveling. Uh, I mean, come on. Yeah, for sure. Beta Brand wants your help turning up-and-coming designs into full-fledged products. You can, like, vote on new designs. They have so many patterns, so Mm -hmm. many styles. They're coming up with new stuff all the time. And you will even get 15% off every time you help to fund a new design. Yeah, it's like a crowdfunding creative process. It's so cool. Yeah, so there's new product all the time. And whatever your style, Beta Brand has the pants to match. Not only Mm -hmm. has Beta Brand revolutionized office wear, but they now offer premium denim. Hello. With the same flexibility and comfort as those yoga pants. I'm Ugh. so excited. I, I I cannot wait to jump on board with their denim, but I have three pairs of the dress pant yoga pants. Yeah. I wear them all the time. Uh, the fact that they do not wrinkle is a staunch reality that I didn't realize how much I needed this in my life. Traveling with these pants is great because I'm a terrible packer, so I definitely like roll things in a ball and throw them in my suitcase. (laughs) And these pants come out looking, you know, ready to wear to a meeting. And the thing that I really hated about traditional style dress pants, especially beside the fact that, as I've mentioned many times, my body is like a Frankenstein's monster of miscellaneous parts. So the dress pants that I've tried to buy in the past have just never fit me right. They're probably too long or trying to accommodate my butt, then they don't fit in the waist. (laughs) And But my biggest, like... Uh, frustration with dress pants is that the fly always falls down. Always. Always. So I'd be going into a professional meeting and having to try to do that like quick, subtle pinky to the crotch, <laughs> make sure the fly is up move and everyone sees it. <laughs> everyone sees it. Who are we and kidding? And I don't have to do that anymore with the dress pant yoga pants. They are incredible. I love them so, so, so much. And you've got to try a pair of these pants from Beta Brand. Trust me, you will love them too. And you get 20% off at betabrand.com slash gals. So don't wait. See for yourself why millions of people agree that they're these are the most comfortable pants ever. They are the most comfortable dress pants ever. I can attest to this. So go to betabrand.com slash gals for 20% off. That's B-E-T-A-B-R-A-N-D dot com slash gals and treat your pants. Treat them. Uh, true crime. It is my passion, but even I need the occasional break. So when I feel like I need a mental palate cleanser, my go-to refresher is best fiends. <laughs> I love this game so much, even when I am stuck, which I currently am on level 963. (laughs) I've been trying all morning to get past it because it is, it's challenging, but it's not like frustrating. I want to throw my phone. It's like, no, I want to beat this. This is, it's fun every time. And I get this like sick satisfaction because I'm connected to it on Facebook. So I play with a bunch of friends and also like a lot of members of the wine coven. I totally see in the best fiends app. And then I'll like, totally pass them in levels and just be kind of (laughs) pumped about it. (laughs) It's just, it's super fun. The characters are so cute. The puzzles are challenging and they're different every level. And then they do these like really fun, unique seasonal promotions. So right now going into the holidays, you like collect app pumpkin pies in the game. And then like the pumpkin pies get you points. I don't even, I can't even, it's (laughs) so much fun. I totally love it. It is a unique and exciting puzzle experience unlike any other puzzle games out there. And I play a lot of games on my phone and I've deleted a lot of them because Best Fiends has now just like completely taken my number one spot in terms of the games that I like to play. Um, They treat the game like a service for their players. Again, it's super fun when you can log in on Facebook and kind of like see the progress of your friends. You can send each other gifts. You can send each other like powers and all kinds of fun things to keep each other playing the game. And then there's also that little friendly level of competition. 
I also really love it for traveling because it does not require internet to play. So I am about to embark on a long trip overseas. And if you better believe I'm going to be bringing Best Fiends along with me. You can play it anywhere, on the plane, on the subway, not while you're driving, but like anywhere. It's so great. I collect all these different characters. I have a ton of them and they each have different abilities. So you have to like pick them strategically to pass each level. So it actually does kind of test your mind and I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It's a really, really fun game. Amanda is a best fiends fiend. I am a fiend. <laughs> You're my best fiend. Thank you. <laughs> so engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters too. It's a five-star rated mobile puzzle game with over 100 million downloads globally. Doy. Dang. So download free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. So again, that is friends without the R, best fiends. Treat your mm. games. Treat it. All right. My case. Do it. I was struggling to figure out what the fuck to Google for the theme of martini-fueled murders. Oh, my God. Um, I had so much fun Googling woman kills husband by poisoning cocktail. (laughs) Oh, well, cocktail opens the field right up. I was trying to be really martini specific. Oh, I didn't even fucking bother trying. (laughs) Cool. All right. Well, I eventually had a eureka moment. Because who is perhaps the most famous martini drinker of all time? Popeye the Sailor Man. (laughs) Gold finger. Yes. In your butt. He'll solve your crimes. (laughs) With his cold finger. Ew. Okay. All right. (laughs) Okay, I was making up those lyrics, but it wasn't that far off. I'm going to be honest. (laughs) That song is really weird and gross. In the 1964 film, Goldfinger. Goldfinger. (laughs) (laughs) Sean Connery immortalized Bond's favorite drink with the line, shaken, not stirred. I'm still more of a Pierce Brosnan Bond, but whatever. It's fine. I'll take it. Pierce Brosnan is the most handsome Bond, but his movies are the worst Bond movies. I love them. They're so campy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, they're really bad. Okay, but author Ian Fleming had already gone into Bond's favorite martini recipe in exacting detail years earlier in the Dr. No book. Quote, a medium dry martini with a slice of lemon peel, shaken and not stirred, please. I would prefer Russian or Polish vodka. Of course you would. Karen. Yep. So that is James Bond's martini recipe officially. Love it. So now you might think this would be a fruitless Google search for a true crime show since James Bond is not true. He is, in fact, fictional. But you would be wrong on both counts. Ooh. Well, yeah, isn't it based on, like, actual, very fabricated, no, but, like, that's spy not, stuff? That's not. Not really, no. It's not? That's not spy why. stuff. Oh, I thought it was. Spy stuff. Spy stuff. Um, okay. Spy stuff. A chemistry no. happens. <laughs> A chemistry not, happens. A chemistry <laughs> occurs, and well, James Bond is real. Um, okay, no. Indeed, in 2006, a marina manager in Suffolk, England, had the profound privilege to meet a real life James Bond when he helped a bank repossess the international spy's boat. Wow. Wow. Let's back up a bit, however. This case takes place in Her Majesty's England, which is fitting for James Bond. And you know what that means. I have no idea. (laughs) It's time for geography. Uh Geography. So Suffolk is home to the villages of Woolpit, Barry St. Edmunds, (laughs) and I... Yikes. E-Y-E. <laughs> oh. <laughs> as well as the metropolises of Assington, 
Cockfield. Yes. Gipping. Blow Norton. No. No, Norton. Shimpling and Amanda's favorite, Snape. Oh, Snape. I like Assington. Assington is a I like Blow Norton. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Blow Norton. Blorton. Cockfield. <laughs> Assington Cockfield and Blow Norton. God. I want to have Doctor, like a pet. No. No. I want to get a I want to get a pet skink and name him Lord Assington Blow Norton. <laughs> Cockfield. Oh, that's good. Yes, Cockfield Lord Esquire. Lord Assington Blow Norton Cockfield at your service. <laughs> Esquire. I like it. Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's return to our unfortunate, suddenly boatless bond. Mm-hmm. 41-year-old Michael Newitt was twice married and the father of five children, which I should knew be it. a crime. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Uh, he also owned and operated Mycena Technologies Limited, which is branded as a telecommunications firm, but basically they just installed phone systems and they were based in Leicester, mm. Mm. which is spelled Leicester. Dumb. Worcestershire. 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 Worcester sauce. But the company was failing and on the brink of bankruptcy, which would be the second time that knew it would have to file for bankruptcy. So things are not looking great for him. Mm. And on this December day in question, knew it was about to suffer one more financial blow, Norton. <laughs> His 200,000 <000 laughs> His 200,000-pound boat was being kicked out of the marina for unpaid docking fees. Mm. But Newitt had a plan. Quote, the broke businessman morphed into Commander Newitt, an intelligence officer from MI5. Whoa. According to the commander, the boat was needed for an undercover mission. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. The lo- <laughs> <laughs> the lie worked like a charm and kicked off a two-year role-playing ruse. So he literally I don't understand can... how people are so gullible. I don't believe anyone about anything. <laughs> right? I don't believe I my parents about my lineage. <laughs> right. Well, you shouldn't. No. There's, there's yeah. red flags all over the place. You're yeah. So right. You're so right. Um, no, he literally... As part of the boat incident, Newitt produced a copy of the Official Secrets Act, which is basically like the the legislation in the UK of like, if you work for the government with classified information, you can't share classified information. Mm-hmm. He literally just provided a photocopy of the Official Secrets Act and was, was like, like, here's I'm my a warrant. Spy. Yeah, <laughs> don't take my boat. That's like when Michael Scott gives uh, Mindy Kaling the Hello Kitty computer case that she had gotten as given as the corporate gift. And she's like, prove it. Show me the receipt. Show me that you actually went and bought this. And he, just <laughs> hand, he just hands her a receipt for McDonald's. And it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. here it is. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, how many filet of fishes did you order? <laughs> Seven. Yeah, it's just, it's fucking crazy, but it worked. So I can't. I mean, confidence is key. It's like people showing a fake ID or something, Mm -hmm. or like an obviously expired ID. Oh, good. (laughs) (laughs) He would later pull the same stunt when the bank tried to repossess his car, a Volvo XC90, my dream car, that he'd fitted out with strobe lights and a siren. What is he, 19? What is wrong with this guy? He vapes, he, that's for sure. He, he vapes and his name is Kyle. <laughs> My Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> He'd even pulled someone over on the M6 highway in Cheshire and no. handed the man, who was a drunk driver, so like, in fairness, 
good on him. Citizens arrest. The the one good thing that this man has done. Handed the man over to the police before driving off, saying he was, quote, on his way to a special assignment. Okay. (laughs) He'd make a terrible spy. He's just leaking secrets all over the place. He's telling everyone. (laughs) He's like got a blow horn. He's like, I am a spy. Let me keep my boat and my luxury SUV. (laughs) Yeah. Even Newitt's wife, Louise, appeared to believe her husband was an international man of mystery. (laughs) He's Slept beside what would later turn out to be a replica nine millimeter handgun each night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and and would often quote, <laughs> and would often quote race off from home without warning on special missions. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Special just, missions to cheat with like Nancy yeah. down the street. Oh, make believe. He's fully special. into it. His delusion is deep. <laughs> what a fucking dork. <laughs> <laughs> Later, when the jig was finally up, Louise would tell police in disbelief, you've got the wrong man. My husband works for you. Oh, honey, no. <laughs> oh, honey. No, Louise. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, honey, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> honey, honey, doctor, no. No. <laughs> oh. Knew it's. <laughs> knew its cover was blown, was blown Norton <laughs> when, <blow> he, <laughs> when he took things one step too far. <laughs> he apparently, quote, flounced into a police station in Hinkley and introduced himself as commander in the Metropolitan Police Service. No. <laughs> He's such a dick. <laughs> He's ballsy. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me wonder if he actually is starting to like believe these delusions. <laughs> he Sounds has like it. to be, he has to be believing it. He further specified that he was a special operations commander with MI5, the Foreign Office and Counterterrorism Units. <laughs> and he even had a fancy wallet to prove it. Oh no. <laughs> it's there. It's a Velcro wallet. Photo on the drive. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh wow. Mhm. I mean it's pretty fancy. Are we looking at the wallet? Oh yeah, there is a wallet. Oh my god. The leather wallet containing new a uh, new its fake ID was embossed with the crown <laughs> emblem and the letters CMG, which stand for quote a high ranking award fictitiously awarded to James Bond in the yes. story from Russia with Love. <laughs> yes, did he have this custom made for himself? Yes, he did. Oh, oh no. <laughs> By the way, these photos will be available on the blog. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You and gotta see You gotta see. You gotta wallet. see. He didn't even find well, like uh, it may it would make sense that he, you can't find like what a special award is for a secret spy agency. And you So he just they, went with a James Bond one. You'd think Don't that they go would. with the most recognizable fake special award that exists in popular culture. Also, mm-hmm. do you really think that this high level award at a secret agency would hand out like corporate gifts like a leather yeah. wallet? Here's I, your yeah. coffee like a mug. Hello Kitty computer case. A fleece yeah. jacket with like a secret <laughs> emblem on it like <laughs> a mouse pad yeah they're a just mug. like what the fuck am i supposed to do with this i guess a i'll mug. take this to goodwill <laughs> an umbrella <laughs> oh my god oh okay oh my god yes New- Knew it went to the police that day, uh, that fateful day, ostensibly to, quote, pass on intelligence about oh, drug right. dealers. Mm. He's Thank so God we what? have him. He's so delusional. Yeah. <laughs> but an actual police officer became suspicious of his commander title. <laughs> yeah. The, off- <laughs> the officer, PC Lee Smith, who has a military background, so he's aware of, like, hierarchy and t- 
titles and insignia. Yeah. Sniffed some bullshit and decided to do some digging. He soon uncovered Newitt's prior convictions for failing to keep proper accounts for his past businesses, which had filed for bankruptcy. So he'd he'd had, like, convictions in his past. P.C. Smith promptly arrested the commander for impersonating an officer. (laughs) Investigators then seized handcuffs, a friction lock baton, three air weapons and ammunition, seven flash grenades, police radio handsets and earpieces, none of which were functional. My God. As well as numerous shredded fake identity documents from Newitt's vehicle and residence. So he had a whole kit and caboodle. He definitely did believe his own bullshit. I think he was starting to, yes. (laughs) Interestingly, quote, a search of his rented home in Osgathorpe, Leicestershire, also (laughs) revealed numerous motor racing helmets, overalls, and boots, and officers believe he may have once posed as a racing driver. Huh. So he had other identities that he was toying with as well. This is bizarre. Or maybe that was Commander Newitt's cover. (laughs) Oh. You know? It's like Russian dolls. There are so many, like... They're all nested. Fractures Mm -hmm. here. (laughs) P.C. Smith, so the arresting officer, said, quote, The James Bond character became real to him. He told his employees he was a secret agent, But if he really was a spy, they would be the last people to know. Yeah, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) In court, Newitt confessed to five charges for fraudulent IDs, one count of impersonating a police officer, and two imitation firearms charges, including one for a commando rifle. So he had one charge for that fake nine millimeter that he slept with and then also a rifle (laughs) after all of this like came to the surface don't you think his wife would just be like you're a fucking idiot yeah i hope his wife still believes got out i hope his wife was like this is just part of his cover no she's so deep in it too (laughs) she believes him it's speculation i have no idea but At trial, Newitt's defense argued that he suffered from, quote, low (laughs) self-esteem, which (laughs) which caused him to invent all of this. But the pity party didn't sway the judge, and Newitt was handed down a two-year jail sentence in late 2008. So he's definitely out by now, and one can only hope is working for Her Majesty. (laughs) I mean, he did such a great job in the interview. (laughs) <laughs> right? All right, and then I have one one other super, super short one. On October 4th, 2012, Gabby Scanlon was celebrating her 18th birthday at the newly opened Oscars Wine Bar and Bistro in Lancaster, which mm-hmm. is exactly 84.3 miles northwest of Peniston, oh, I checked. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you walked each step. That's exact. Mm. When she was handed a free Nitro Jägermeister shot by a bar employee. I don't like that. Nitro? Is it just when it's like pre-chilled? I will find out what it means. Um, But it's her 18th birthday, so it means it's like the birthday where she can start to drink in the UK. Right. So she gets a free shot. The cocktail is laced with two toxic substances, liquid nitrogen, which makes the drink appear to smoke or be surrounded by a cloud of white vapor, as well as the even more dangerous Jägermeister. (laughs) (laughs) So foul. I cannot. I cannot. Uh, Liquid nitrogen boils at negative 196 degrees Celsius. Whoa. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. It's really odd. 
It is not meant to be ingested and can cause severe internal damage. So it's the perfect ingredient to a cocktail. (laughs) So anyway, back to young Gabby. She asked the employee if the shot was safe to drink because it was like smoking and had vapor and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he assured her it was. But after she took it, she felt an immediate searing pain down her esophagus and into her stomach. Yeah, you do not drink that shit. Yeah, she began tearing at her clothes in a panic as smoke billowed from her mouth and nose. Oh, this is why the dry ice goes in the bottom of the cauldron, and then you put, like, another punch bowl over the dry ice Mm -hmm. to serve from. You don't put the dry ice in the... That's so annoying. She couldn't breathe and was rushed to the hospital where surgeons were forced to remove her stomach and Holy small shit. bowel in uh, order to save her life. Oh! Holy sh... This poor girl. Oh, my God. I hope this motherfucker got sued for all he's worth. I don't know. Lancashire police said, quote, medical opinion is that this would have proved fatal had the operation not been carried out urgently. Good Lord. The wine bar and bistro normally serves a cocktail for like nine pounds, which includes liquid nitrogen and champagne, and which apparently hasn't caused any issues. But the bar admitted that it, quote, failed to ensure the shot sized cocktail was safe yeah. for consumption. No risk assessment has been carried out on the dangers. Oh my god. So the bar stopped serving any liquid nitrogen cocktails, obviously. Yeah. And Gabby survived, but she fucking lost two organs. Her bowel. Yeah. Fuck. At 18 years old, oh. and I'm sure she's gonna sue, but I didn't follow up you know how every that. time you have a hangover, you're like, oh, I'm never drinking again. And then you definitely drink again. <laughs> right. Uh, if this happened to me, I would never drink again. She right? probably isn't able to. I know. But like she got a she was handed a free drink and she asked if it was safe to drink. Yeah. I mean, this could have been me in New Orleans. I was taking shots out of people's mouths. I yeah. didn't know what planet I was on. A free was shot. I, yeah, I wouldn't have even asked. I know. Yeah. So those are my cases. Wow. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And now let's hear from our sponsor, Jägermeister and Liquid Nitrogen. Y'all, this season can be a whirlwind of deliveries, visitors, ick, holiday travel. So it is the best time of the year to upgrade your doorbell and keep an eye on home no matter where the holidays take you. This is for real. Ring brings you so much peace of mind. It helps you stay connected to your home from anywhere. So if there's a package delivery or a surprise visitor, you'll get an alert and be able to see, hear, and speak to them. We are living in the age of technology, y'all, all from the convenience of your phone. If you're on the go this season, whether it's across town or across the country, you can check in anytime for some much needed holiday peace of mind. Oh my God. I love my ring system. I love Mm -hmm. being able to, well, I'm a millennial, obviously. I really don't like it when people just knock on my door. Right. (laughs) Don't stop by. Do not stop by. We've made arrangements. Exactly. Text. Yeah. But yeah, when someone knocks on your door and you're like maybe upstairs in your bathrobe and you're like, oh my God, do I need to go answer the door? Is it like right. a political door knocker? Which bless them, but man, sometimes I don't want to engage because again, are they in black slacks, white button ups, and skinny black ties? You know, or is it the delivery man with your wink delivery? Because then I'm answering the door. Because then we're answering the door no matter what state. So mm-hmm. it's I just love being able to see who's at the front door. If I'm out of town, being able to see if a package was delivered because then I can like text my neighbor and ask if they could like put it inside. Because because again, like Amanda said, season of deliveries, y'all. Yeah. Like that package thievery is very real. So yes, consult my Twitter and you will know the truth of that. Oh, yeah. So for these and many more reasons, I love my ring system, the video doorbell and all of the 
associated features that is the way to go. Mm -hmm. So as a listener, you have a special holiday offer on a Ring Welcome Kit available right now. With a Ring Video Doorbell 2 and the Chime Pro, the Ring Welcome Kit has everything you need to keep an eye on home no matter what the holiday season brings. So with Ring, you are always home. Just go to ring.com forward slash gals. That's G-A-L-S. That is, again, ring.com forward slash gals. Additional terms may apply. Treat yo security. Oh, my gosh. Trade it. Finding a bra can be a hellscape to navigate. Mm Mm-hmm. And Third Love makes it easy for a multitude of reasons. Number one, Third Love uses data points generated by millions of people who have taken their Fit Finder quiz. We love a good quiz. Mm. To design their bras with breast size and shape in mind for a perfect fit and premium feel. Check, check, and check. They also offer more sizes than most other brands because Third Love offers more than 80 sizes, including their signature half cup sizes hello how incredible is that and my personal favorite because i hate to leave my house (laughs) the convenience of third love you can skip the trip you can find your fit with third love's online fit finder you order and try on at home no more awkward fitting room experiences no more teenage girl who's doing her like second shift with the little like the Ugh. sad overused measuring tape around yeah. their neck and they're like knocking on the door while you're silently crying to yourself in the <laughs> in the dressing room <laughs> is this too you know detailed an experience mm. am i triggered right now maybe a little bit but <laughs> third love keeps these things from happening to you Oh my God. Third Love is amazing. They offer comfort and quality. This is hands down the most comfortable bra that you'll own. Uh Uh-huh. They're so soft. The the cups are like a little bit stretchy. It just makes it feel like it's just formed to your skin in the best way. Yeah. They also have straps that won't slip and tagless labels. They're not itching back there. Like if Uh, we've we've all been there. And like where the bra strap where the hook is, where the tag is. It's right in the middle of your back. It's like the one place you can't get to. For real. (laughs) And you cannot train your cats to scratch that spot. We've tried. Not my cats. No. But yeah, that tagless label is key. They also have lightweight, super thin memory foam cups that, like I said, just mold to your shape. Mm-hmm. I'm just really grateful that they offer uh, bra options that have like you can kind of have two different cup sizes. Yeah. Because I know I'm not alone that my boobs are two drastically different sizes. Oh, your girls are roll uneven. They really are, and like I love them just as they are. They're great. I'm not ashamed of them, but that's Mm-mm. thanks in part to Third Love offering a solution yeah. that doesn't end in like a huge inch gap on the small real. side. For all the world to see through my t-shirt. I feel that. Oh my god, they also have robes. I just Ugh. I just got out of the shower. I am currently wearing my robe. It's so I love the robes. They also have really like beautiful. I have some very beautiful, like sexy lace panties from them Ooh, that are girl. also extremely comfortable. Mm. Like taking that sort of I feel really sexy and good in this these undergarments, but they are also comfortable. That is combining my two absolute favorite things. I can't even. And Third Love knows that there is a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Just go to thirdlove.com slash gals now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash gals for 15% off today. Treat yo undergarments. Treat them. The holiday season is here. It is here, whether we like it or not. And that means gift giving to ourselves and I guess to (laughs) others. I guess. If you're me, mostly to ourselves. And (laughs) giving holiday gifts is great, but overspending on all of those holiday gifts is definitely not great. So why spend more than you have to? Finding the lowest price is easy if you have honey. Ugh. We love honey. Honey, tell us why we love honey. Okay, honey. 
<laughs> so if you're listening to this show right now, which you are, you already know that we hate leaving our <laughs> houses. So much. Which Ugh. means there's a lot of online shopping that happens in these households. Mm-hmm. And like Amanda said, holidays coming up. I'm not going to go to the mall. You kidding me? Mm. You could not pay me to go to the mall during the holidays. Absolutely not. So I actually did get a jump start on holiday shopping recently. I know I'm normally shopping on like December 23rd. Good but, for you, um, honey. Yeah. So I um, went to a popular clothing retail website and I my little honey uh, icon popped up while I was shopping, while I was checking out. I got 18% off. No. That's not nothing. That's not nothing. And honey saves me money on almost anything. Like, I'm aware that it's there. I'm aware that I have downloaded the honey application and it's, like, always running. But sometimes I'm just not really thinking about what types of things that I'm buying, if they're not like right. goods, they could be services. And that little coin pops up, dances like I'm it saving It thinks about money. it for you. It is. It goes like ding ding, honey, save that money. Yeah. Save that money, honey. So if you're buying gifts this season, then you need honey. And if you're not, you probably know someone who is. So do them a solid and tell them about honey. Get everybody on board with honey. Honey can help make sure that you're getting the best price for whatever you're buying. It's free to use and it installs in just two clicks. Kenyon uses it. If Kenyon can do it, anybody can. Mm-hmm. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash gals. That's joinhoney.com slash gals. Treat your bank account. Treat it. I went a little darker this week. Mm. So we're going to talk about uh, some kind of cuckoo bananas lady and it's going to be fun. Okay, um, Amanda Jacobson was born. Yep, I know, right? <laughs> this is out of upstate New York, so it's a little close to home. But uh, Stacey Daniels and Michael Wallace met when they were both teenagers in 1985. As any hormone-fueled 17-year-olds might, the two fell madly in love and married when they both turned 18. Oh, dear God. I know, your first mistake. By 1988, they had their first daughter, Ashley, and another daughter, Bree, in 1991. From the outside looking in, this was a family that John Bon Jovi could have sung about. (laughs) Blue-collar folks getting by on her work as an ambulance dispatch operator and his work as a night mechanic. Like, he worked an evening shift for, like, some big mechanic's shop i don't know mm, cool. or their names salt, jack and diane. salt of the <laughs> earth folk yeah a little ditty about jack and diane but that's not bon jovi uh they lived a quiet life and rarely fought though stacy did feel that michael favored the youngest daughter brie and often went above and beyond to bond with their older daughter ashley to pick up the slack and ashley would later say that they were the best of friends which you never want in a mother-daughter relationship no. or whatever. <laughs> not like safe. many no like many young couples do, Stacy and Michael began to grow apart, though their bonds with their children remained incredibly strong. Despite the children keeping them married, rumors of affairs involving both Stacy and Michael began to spread. In a later interview with ABC News, Stacy alleged that Michael struggled with substance use disorder and that was putting a strain on their marriage, as well as their opposite schedules with him working nights uh, as a mechanic and her dispatch shifts scheduled during the day. But the couple remained together despite all of this and the marriage, although seemingly broken, carried on. Mm-hmm. Friends later stated that Stacy was contemplating divorce around this time, but nothing was ever filed. Then, in 1999, Michael hit a rough patch with his health. Throughout the winter of that year, he was ill with a persistent but undiagnosed sickness. Stacy, what have you done? Correct. <laughs> it was uh, those chili dogs. <laughs> and special thanks. <laughs> I have a tasty <laughs> No relation to cocktails or martinis. Special thanks. We're done. Chili dogs crimes. Yep. <laughs> Um, he was often unsteady on his feet, appeared bloated or swollen, um, and had a hacking cough that just wouldn't go away. His family was growing increasingly concerned as this didn't look like a common cold and he simply couldn't shake it. They urged him to go to the doctor to get checked out. And he did and was told that he might have an inner ear issue that's causing some of his symptoms, but it didn't 
add up because it didn't explain like the bloating. It didn't really explain the cough. It more explained his sort of vertigo and like the dizziness. So it only really accounted for one thing. Mm -hmm. And so his family is basically saying like, you should go to another doctor and get a second opinion. But for reasons that we can only speculate, which could include toxic masculinity, mediocre health coverage, not wanting to miss work, any of the above, none of the above, who knows. Mm Mm-hmm. Michael did not make it into the doctor again and died suddenly in January of 2000 at only 38 years old oh, while laying God. on the sofa in his home. Oh, oh my God. So young. <sighs> um, Michael was deeply loved by his friends and family who said, quote, Mike was the life of the party. If you needed something that Mike had, he would give it to you. Um, he was just like an, a helpful, generous, like loving family man, despite rumors of maybe him having too many beers once in a while or, you know, extramarital affairs, which were not corroborated or confirmed. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, I honestly don't have reason to believe that he actually was like stepping out on his marriage, but people can still be good and make those kinds of mistakes. So I don't think Mm -hmm. that's even really relevant to be perfectly honest. I agree. Um, But doctors ruled his death a heart attack and Stacy accepted this assessment without question even when their very astute at the time 11 year old daughter Ashley wanted more answers and thought an <gasps> autopsy should be performed yes Ashley yes. I know Hell yeah. 11 Ashley years old in the wine coven a hundred thousand percent oh we will come back to Ashley don't you worry um but you know she's 11 so Stacy's like I'm waving this off Michael was put to rest as she collected his $55,000 life insurance policy. Not a big policy. Not huge, but it was also the 90s. Mm-hmm. So, like, that amount of money definitely went farther than, than it, it does now. It was the 60s. It was the 60s, but that's it's not. I mean, it's a blue collar. For a right. blue collar family, that's not a bad chunk of cash. Yeah, right. Right. Um, a year later, and this is blue collar in the nineties where that actually meant like two people could have a combined income of like 50 to $60,000 and, and still live survive. Up, and up like okay life salary. with two kids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a year later, Stacy meets a man named David Castor when she takes a job as an office assistant at his place of business. He was a successful businessman who owned an air conditioning installation and repair company. The two quickly strike up a bond that leads to love and are married in 2003. So only three years after Michael dies. Mm -hmm. Stacy seemingly had lovely taste in men as David, like her first husband, was kind and loved by his friends and family. And she loved him, too. Um, Quote, David was very conscientious, very work driven, very into the outdoors. She said he had snowmobiles and four wheelers and a boat. So maybe Mm. she just loved all of his stuff. Who knows? He had lots of toys. He had toys. Uh, David was support and strength and security to me. David could relate in a lot of ways to Stacy. Though not a widower, he was a divorcee with a now grown child of his own from his previous marriage, David Jr. Um, He openly embraced Stacy being a single mom and did his best to welcome Stacy's daughters, Ashley and Bree, into his life. The daughters, however, were not thrilled about their mother remarrying so soon after their father's death, which I get. And they're teenagers at this point. So yeah, it's like, right. That's going to be hard unhappy. no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after the marriage, things got a little heated at times in the household between David and the girls. Nothing physical. Like, no, there's no sign of any kind of just ab- abuse. You're not my real dad. Yeah. Stuff. Exactly, exactly. And I I think that that would be really hard. And I think that like, sometimes we're all we can be hard on men again, another product of the fucking patriarchy, who, when a lot of challenges come about with blended families, I do sometimes think that like the the patriarch of the family can get a lot more grief about it. Um, Mm -hmm. And so Stacy was quoted as, as saying that, quote, David was difficult with the kids. He expected them to do everything that he said without question. And being my children, they questioned everything. So, like, mm-hmm. this just sounds like pretty normal. You're not my dad. Yeah. Blended family teenager shit. Um, but it would appear that what seemed like paradise was actually going in the opposite direction. And one day, David doesn't show up to where the two both work. Ashley killed him. Cons- well, we wish <laughs> it was concerned. Brie. It was it's funny that you twist. funny that you should say Ashley killed him because we will that uh, will come up. Yes. 
So concerned, Stacy makes several attempts to reach David, but doesn't get an answer. So she calls the local police and explains that, quote, her husband had locked herself in their bedroom for the day following an argument and was not responding to his cell phone. She had, had told the police himself or her in the bedroom him, himself. So she uh-huh. had told police that like the night before they'd had a fight and they had fought like most of the evening. And then at like five in the morning, he kicked her out of the bedroom, like grabbed booze and locked himself in there. She like slept on the couch, went to work, assuming that he was just going to show up to work. He doesn't show up. He's not answering the calls. And so she's like, the last time I saw him was when he locked me out of our bedroom. Okay. So yeah, Stacy had told police that quote, David got upset, took a bottle of Southern comfort. Yum. Went into the bedroom and, and locked himself in and reportedly got drunk and then wouldn't come out. Not the best fighting Um, strategy. Not the best, but also Uh, I can't say I've never done something like this. Depends (laughs) how you define the best. Uh, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, This next portion is from Murderpedia. Quote, she claimed he was depressed, unable to get a response. Sergeant Robert Willoughby of the Onondaga County Sheriff's Department kicked in the door of the bedroom and found David Castor lying dead. (gasps) Among the items near his body were a container of antifreeze and a half full glass of bright green liquid. Willoughby says he remembers that Castor screamed, quote, he's not dead. He's not dead. Ew. So he's dead. (laughs) Sorry. Um, So so (laughs) she's standing there when the sheriff's they bust department down the door. Take, uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. So at first, the coroner ruled David's death a suicide. Idiot. But a closer look at the scene by police started to tell a different story. Mm. From ABC News, quote, police found two glasses on the nightstand next to the bed, one containing what was later identified as antifreeze. And underneath the bed, they found a bottle, like a, one of those large, like, gallon ones you get at the gas station. Mm-hmm of antifreeze with its top off when under police, the bed under the bed like poking out from the bed what the fuck i know it gets worse trust me when police searched the kitchen and found a turkey baster apparently smelling of alcohol disposed in the trash can they began to suspect foul play all right stacy yeah You're a dumb bitch DNA testing of the turkey baser would show David's DNA on the tip, indicating it had been used to put something in his mouth. Like, I don't know, antifreeze. Antifreeze, yeah. <laughs> but something Stacey, that would prevent freezing. Right. And also kill a man. Ex- and uh, also thoroughly kill living. someone. <laughs> yeah. Prevent life. <laughs> But Stacy clung hard to the story that David had killed himself, saying that he had recently lost his father and that his depression and binge drinking led him to take his own life. David's friends and family were not buying it. Detectives began an investigation, but they really didn't have much to go on because, like, there's some evidence, but, like, fingerprints are all over everything. It's in their home. Like, it's kind of a... Uh I don't know all the stop gaps, but, you know, it's not exactly a cut-and-dry investigation right um the investigation itself lasted over two years with detectives trying to connect the dots between stacy's two husbands who died under suspiciously similar circumstances Mm -hmm. a few details about the investigation uh were listed on wikipedia quote the detectives on the case ordered wiretaps on caster's house they listened in on phone calls for any unusual conversations. In addition, they set up cameras overlooking Caster's house and, okay, this is the fucking weirdest shit ever. Not not what the investigation did, but what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. They set up cameras on her husband's grave sites who had been buried side by side at Caster's request. Eh, at uh, Stacy's request. The two husbands no. she'd killed were buried in the same plot side by side. No, that's so gross. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Was, was the plan that she would be buried in the middle? Uh, possibly. I don't know. I oh, Which, don't in my like opinion, that. I don't think that's creepy if you have been widowed more than once in, mm-hmm. like, normal circumstances. Right, natural but if you killed them... Yeah, I think there's kind of a sweetness to that, but the fact that she murdered them... But she can't very well, if she's getting away with these murders, she can't very well be like, I murdered them, so I can't be buried next to them. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like she has no, but to, then, she has to do what a widow would do. Yeah, but I don't even think every widow would have both of her ex husbands who never knew each other buried next to each other That's because the part they both that died. I do, that I don't feel great about. The only thing that those two men have in common is the one woman that, that they she married killed them. and that she yeah she killed them. They never met in real life. That's just and odd. with David. With David, it's not like she's his only family. Like he has an ex wife and a son of his own. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. The whole thing just kind of fucking weirds me out. But obviously, she's got issues because she fucking killed both of her husbands. Yeah, so this, this is the is least a, of it. This is the least of our problems. It just really stuck out to me. It just gave me the absolute heebs. Like, yeah, the heeb, the uh, heebie-jeebies. It was bad. So, um, detectives had uh, surveillance cameras set on their grave sites so that uh, she could be recorded if she would visit them. So to continue the quote, Mm -hmm. detectives reasoned that if Castor were truly genuine about her love for her late husbands, then she would eventually visit their graves. They wanted to observe. It is speculation. Because like I. That's circumstantial at best. Yeah. Like some people don't feel connected to the grave. They feel connected to other things about that. My father died and I've never been to his grave ever. Yeah. Yeah, Granted, I have some of his ashes. To him. Yeah, I have some of his ashes, but I don't. I've I've never been to his gravesite. So yeah. yeah, I think that's kind of bullshit too. But I also kind of get why right. they would want to surveil that that area. Um, it says they wanted to observe her behavior while she was there, but Castor, however, never visited. The investigators soon felt the only way to prove Castor responsible for both homicides was to have uh, Michael Wallace's body exhumed. Duh. You can't just go off of like, this is how she acted at their graveside. You have to get fucking evidence. So he was, and a toxicology screening ruled that Michael Wallace had also been killed through antifreeze poisoning. So Mm -hmm. now we're seeing a lot. A pattern. of, Of dots, Yeah. So police are closing in on Stacy and they bring her in for questioning. And this might be one of my favorite moments in this fucking case. Detective Dominic Spinelli, which sounds like a character in a movie. Yeah. (laughs) It sounds like a character in a movie about a murder involving poison and not an actual human man, but Dominic Uh Spinelli played by Vin Diesel brings Uh her in for questioning on September 7th of 2007. And listen to this fucking quote. (laughs) I can't. Okay. I asked Stacy, do you remember which glass it was that you poured the cranberry juice in? Because she was saying that she had poured her husband cranberry juice. And she looked at it and said, well, when I poured the antifree, <laughs> I... No. And then she stopped and said, I mean, I mean the cranberry juice. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you dumb and you dumb. (laughs) And when the detective picked up on her slip of the tongue, she accused him of trying to frame her and stopped the interview. Yeah, honey, you you did that with my own. The anti free. You Freudian framed me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So obviously now she is really freaking out and wanted to divert attention away from herself. Her brilliant idea was to put the heat on her oldest daughter and best friend, Ashley. Oh, you bitch. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> Ashley's no, the I, hero. I, Ashley is the fucking hero. And this poor girl, who was at her first day, attending her first day of college, first day, oh. when police contacted her with the news that her father, Michael, who had been exhumed, was officially killed by antifreeze poisoning, and they oh. were reopening his case as a homicide... What first fucking day fucking of college day. she gets this this piece of information. She's obviously devastated. She calls her mom Stacy to talk about it. And remember that Stacy's phones are all tapped, so police hear the entire conversation wherein Stacy is extremely interested in what Ashley may have said to police on the phone when they called her about her dad Michael. And she suggests that Ashley come over that night for a cocktail. No. Nope, Finally nope. bringing this back Anti-freeze. to the episode topic. Antifreeze oh cocktail. God. Pretty much. Because they had both, quote, had a hard day. <laughs> yeah. So Stacy mixes her daughter a drink and Ashley accepts it without question. Pretty soon, she became incredibly sleepy and goes to her bedroom and falls asleep. 
She woke up the next day feeling hungover after one drink at the age of like 19. I don't fucking think so. Mm-hmm. You should be bouncing back way easier than that. You're not in your mm-hmm. 30s, honey. <laughs> she goes to her classes for the day and comes back home to her mom's house after school. With Ashley's 21st birthday right around the corner and the hard times the family is going through, Stacy suggests they let loose because she's not a regular mom. She's a cool mom. She's a killer mom. She's a killer mom. So she starts mixing another batch of cocktails, a simple concoction of vodka and orange juice, but with a not so lemony twist. A pepper vodka because she was in China and orange (laughs) juice. It's and the worst nothing. ever, and it makes for a really angry drunk. Let me tell you. Oh, I believe it, because you're cranky <laughs> about having to drink it in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, Sergeant Michael Norton, Blow Norton, reflects <laughs> on a statement that Ashley gave to police saying, quote, she remembered that the drink did not taste very good and that her mom got her a straw and told her to put the straw to the back of her throat and to just drink it. Uh, That's how cocktails work. That's how parenting works <laughs> to your you 19 get, year you old gotta child. Get I can this imagine booze in your system. ASAP, I can honey. imagine. <laughs> I can imagine a mom, an exasperated mom doing this with like baby milk. <laughs> and being like, just drink it, just put it back and drink it. Just like get into a toddler. <laughs> Not with a cocktail to a 19 year old, though. Oh my God. Um, or a 20 year old. She says she did what her mother told her, and then she was tired after she drank it and went and laid down. Ashley's little sister, Bree, found her the next morning in her bed, barely breathing and panicked, screaming for her mother to call 911. Stacy apparently told 911 operators that Ashley had consumed alcohol and quote, quite a few doses of medications. A uh, chemistry, chemistry occurred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bree, still in the room with Ashley, then found something odd. A typed letter indicating that it was from Ashley. So not signed, but like typed, typed from Ashley or some shit. Nope. Yep. That contained a confession for the murders of her father and stepfather and that she was now taking her own life. This, oh, she's killed her father at the age of 11? Yeah. This bitch cool. is yeah. really bad at murder. Awful at it. Yeah. Well, I mean, awful at it, but also like deaf would have gotten away with it entirely with her first husband if she hadn't killed her second husband. Yeah. 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 Meanwhile, on the phone with 911 in the other room, Stacy is making it very clear that she had seen the note in Ashley's room. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. The district attorney working on the case stated, quote, it seemed more important for her to tell them about the suicide note than to be talking about the condition of her daughter. Very Keep- suspect. Ugh. By some miracle, Ashley survived what was described as a, quote, cornucopia of drugs in her system. Ugh. And, and doctors said she was minutes from death. Like, if they had gotten to her 15 minutes later, she would have died. Oh, my God, this woman. Yeah. she After she had come to, she explained that she did not write any such suicide note, did not knowingly swallow any pills, and most certainly did not murder her father and stepfather. Mm-hmm. Stacy Castor was arrested right there in the hospital and charged with the murder of David Castor and attempted murder of her daughter, Ashley. I could not find the name of the pills used uh, to like fucking poison her, but in multiple articles, they were referred to as quote, sleeping pills and other pills. So I imagine it was just a cocktail of some of Stacy's own prescription meds and like Ambien alone mixed with alcohol can be extremely oh, yeah. dangerous yeah. and antifreeze. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows? Um, In January of 2009, her trial began, and though she was not being charged for her first husband, Michael Wallace's murder, the judge did allow attorneys to enter Michael Wallace's death as evidence to support the prosecution. Good. That coupled with Ashley taking the stand against her mother, wiretapped conversations, and the discovery of the suicide note on her own personal computer with not one, but two drafts. <laughs> She's beforehand. such an idiot. I She's know. so bad. It's just, Terrible. It's like, read an Agatha Christie novel, you Read a movie, idiot. for God's sake. Read a goddamn movie. I can't. Um, so all of that pretty much sealed Stacy's fate. And after four days of deliberations, the jury returned with a guilty verdict and Stacy was convicted of second degree murder of David Castor, attempted murder of her daughter and forging David Castor's will. 
The judge presiding over her trial stated at her sentencing, quote, in my 34 years in criminal ju- in the criminal justice system as a lawyer and a judge, I have seen serial killers, contract killers, killers of every variety and stripe. But I have to say, Mrs. Castor, you are in a class all by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I God. can't even. So Stacey was sentenced to 51 years in prison, but died before completing her sentence in 2016 at only 48 years old. How'd she Whoa. die? She died of a heart attack in her cell and there was no evidence of like suicide or foul play. Or I anti-freeze. personally think karma fucking got her. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really interesting that she died suddenly of an actual heart attack when that was like what the coroner assumed said about her first husband about her first husband it's like that is some fucking karmic his ghost gave her a heart attack i fucking hope so because i'm sorry i'm not about the death penalty but if you just die of natural causes while you're rotting in your cell for killing two people and almost killing your own child yeah. Bye, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, bitch. Bye, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Stacey Castor, maybe the worst criminal of all time. Ever. Yeah, she sucks. Oh, my so God. Dumb. Whoa, sucks so, so much. Bad. Yeah. Nice job. Isn't that wild? It was a super famous story, but I really didn't know much about it. Yeah. I have never heard of that one before. It was like all over the place in obviously the early aughts when all this was going down. And there was actually an episode of, uh, I can't remember what show it was, but a show that aired on Oxygen that covered this story. Yeah. So I thought that was another nice little connection to little our tie-in. guests from earlier today. Yeah. Love it. Well mm-hmm. done. All right. Well, special thanks this week. It's a bonus ep, so our only special thanks are to our very special guests, Darren Carp and John Thrasher of Martinis and Murder. Thank you Woo-hoo! both yes. so much for coming on the show. We had so much fun having them. We did. It was awesome. It was so fun. We I know we had limited time with them, but it was really fun to get to know them. And hopefully we will be guesting on an upcoming episode of their show. Yeah. yeah. So we can actually dive into some more crime with these sweet, sassy hosts. Can't wait. Yeah. Here for it. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. Most importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! Mother's Day is just around the corner, and it's time to pamper the special mom in your life. And what better way than with the Osea's limited edition skincare sets, featuring clean, vegan, cruelty-free products that are safe for your skin and the planet. Osea is a women-founded, women-led brand that's been making seaweed-infused products for nearly 30 years. This Mother's Day, Osea has two limited edition sets that are perfect for gifting or keeping for yourself. 
Their advanced eye care duo brightens, awakens, and firms the skin around your eyes, while the Golden Glow Body Trio nourishes and smooths the skin all over. Both sets are packaged in giftable boxes. They're so beautiful you can skip the wrapping. And the best part? For a limited time, you can save up to $46 on Osea's sets. Plus, get free shipping. That's Mother's Day made easy. This Mother's Day, get 10% off your first order site-wide with code MOM at OseaMalibu.com. Go to OseaMalibu.com and use code MOM for 10% off site-wide.